Tell everybody, Adrian is very, is brand new, so everybody say hello, Adrian. Hi, guys. Hello. Adrian, hello. tell everybody what you do. You have people here from all over the world. You Can do stuff. Watch? You Tell everybody what you do. You do something very unique. With I'm a hypnotherapist. I'm a hypnotherapist. Hypnotherapist. Would that be, uh, how, would, how would that be useful for people in business and sales and things like that? How is that useful? Tell us a little bit about hypnotherapy. Well, okay, okay. Well, if you think about it, everything that you think about, you feel. And everything that you feel affects how you experience life and how you behave and the things that you do towards whatever it is you're trying to become successful for. So... Hypnosis basically directs your unconscious mind to use your words, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. That was very interesting. What you just said, that last part, I found that very interesting. How would that be useful for someone who has a hesitation to reach out to new prospects or they're reluctant or they have a deep, they have a fear of rejection? How would hypnotherapy help that person? Well, just by imagining this and seeing what kind of um, experiences that you might have and how you might achieve them in your mind first will create that in reality. T say that in English now. <laughs> I put it in, 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 simple, in, simple, in simple terms. Everything that you see outside of you is a projection of what is inside of you. So, 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 so imagine you're a mirror or a, a printer. So everything, everything that's inside of you must be printed into the outside world so you can see it. So you can only ever see what's inside of you. So the more you get yourself right, the more you see the rest of your world become right. What kind of people have you helped with? What kind of problems? Um, smokers, weight loss, uh, anxiety. Um, what else? Confidence is a big one. I had a, I had a guy that, was, that kept failing his... his um, he kept failing his driving test. It was his sixth time. <laughs> um, and he, ca he came to me and I got him to imagine basically, I changed his mindset. So I basically got him to imagine that he was the instructor and, he, and that he was actually just driving the car, showing the other person how to drive in his mind. And uh, after an hour of the session, I got him to experience that in his mind so that he, he was so calm, he actually felt in the test that he was showing the instructor how to drive and that he was the actual instructor. And he, he passed, he passed no problem. And he came back, he couldn't believe it. Like he said, I can't believe it. I just passed like it's, and he, he no nerves at all. So he had a fear inside his mind that uh, just before he even took the test, he yeah, knew. He kept like panicking a... every, every time he was a good driver, but every time he went for the test, he had this really anxious behavior and he, he, he kept failing because he, he couldn't even hardly start the car. Like he, he was always thinking, what oh, I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to do wrong. So I, I completely changed his mindset and made him think that he was the instructor so that he was showing the person basically how to drive rather than being the person that was being examined. So he went in with that mindset and it completely changed his way of driving. Do you think someone in business who has a fear of encountering new people, strangers, picking up the phone, um, engaging people so they can make money, do you think this could help somebody like that? Yeah. Absolutely, definitely. Because how you frame how you frame it will determine how you how you take the call, for instance. But it's all, but it's it's all, it's also about you must create it in your mind first before you make it your reality. You must create it in your mind. So if you can't do that for yourself, yeah, you go to somebody else to help you do that. Do you yeah. uh, you hold a spinning watch in front of them and make them sound like a make them? I can't. Like I can't. I can if they want. I can, I can if they want. <laughs> no, if, it, if you think about it, though, the, your, your, uncon your unconscious mind brings up thoughts when you're not expecting it. So, like, you could, you could be having, you could be having a, um, a, a fine day, and then all of a sudden a thought comes into your mind, and it completely changes your, your day from being a fine day to a miserable day. Really? I so, totally agree with that. And the way it works is the more you become aware of consciously, what you're doing unconsciously, the more you can control it. Because you can't, you can't control something you're not aware of. Exactly. Because you, because you can't see it to know, to, know, to know what it is. So the more you can control 
your conscious, what you're thinking consciously, unconscious behaviors, then the more chances you have of controlling the life that you experience. How do you do that, though? Do you repeat a mantra and, uh, to the bathroom mirror all day long? Uh, how do you change a bad behavior? How do you develop into a good habit? Well, the, first thing, the first thing is you have to be aware of it. And most people aren't aware of their bad behavior. They, if you think about it, every time you wake up, we go back to our feelings of, we'll say what happened yesterday or what we want to achieve. But all of these are, all of these are living in the past. And if you're living in the past, because your memories are your past, if you're living in the past, then you can't see past them. Your, your, experiences, are going to be in the, your, your experience, experiences are going to be in the past as well. So you're constantly rewiring the same networks. And people are wondering then why, they're getting the, why, why aren't they getting better results or different results. But if your dominant thoughts are constantly, your past behaviors and experiences and memories, constantly being in your mind throughout your day, you think you're living in the present, but actually you're living in the past. And if, you don't, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking in the past, then you can only feel in the past, you can only experience in the past, and you can only live in the past, which means you're going to get the same results you've, results you've always had. So, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, anybody have a question for Dr. Byrne? Uh, uh, a <laughs> hypnotherapist here. I, mean, this, the, the, I believe in a lot of the power of suggestion in getting into a routine of good habits. Uh, I want to talk to five new people a day. Um, I, want to, I want to exercise every day, things like that. I want to get into these routines, these habits. Is that working with my subconscious, Adrian? Yeah. yeah. Every, everything is working with your subconscious. That, that's, why, that's why it fascinates me. If you think about it, everything in this world is created twice. In order for it to be in this world, it has to be in someone's imagination. Someone had to have created that experience or that, that house or that car or, or whatever it is. So it, everything in this world is created twice. First, it has to be created in someone's imagination. And next, it has to be created in real life. Does everybody have a good, does, is everybody capable of doing this, of changing, uh, adapting new ways and things like that? I, I, I hate to use the word everybody because it's a generalization. Like you take the likes of autism people or people like that they'd have a hard time to, 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 um, to have that, to get that experience fully. Now, obviously, it depends on the, on the level or degree of autism as well, so on people like that. So I hate to use the word everybody. It's a general term. But the majority of people, definitely. 